Those of you who are familiar with my channel know that I am a Bring You Studios enjoyer. For those of you who don't know who that is, uh, shame on you. Technically, yes, but what I was referring to was my G-string. John Bring Us is a content creator on this platform whose content more or less consists of installing Linux on an interesting or odd device and then sometimes getting frustrated and installing Windows instead. All right, who said that we should be using Bazite? No, I hate Bazite. <laughs> Windows is my favorite. We love Windows on this channel. Windows is the best. Windows just works. Another thing that John is pretty well known for at this point is turning said odd devices into what he claims are Steam Decks. So far, he has bestowed 10 devices the coveted title of Steam Deck, which include, but are not limited to, a Trimble Yuma Windows XP tablet thing, a PS4, a terrible Toshiba laptop, a 799 Value Village Lenovo laptop, a 1X Player 2, an INEO 2S, an iBoss Firewall, a Google Meet, an XI3 prototype Steam Machine, and a cardboard box. <sighs> but this raises the question, what qualifies as a Steam Deck? In the loosest terms possible, I would classify a Steam Deck as a portable device that runs some form of Linux on it. By that definition, four of these ten devices would not cut it as they are not portable and two of them don't even have the chance to run Linux. That's a failing grade, John. A literal F-tier collection. While this fatal blow to John Bringus and his accursed collection of gaming peripherals is sure to cause his sudden and immediate downfall, I must cement it by pointing out one of the most fitting candidates for the title of Steam Deck. Only then may I dethrone the King of Steam Decks and take his crown. That's right, John. I'm beating you to the punch. I'm going to turn this window surface into a Steam Deck. The Microsoft Surface was announced in mid-2012 by former CEO Steve Ballmer. This was one of Steve's first big acts as CEO and Microsoft's first time at rolling their own hardware. At the event, Microsoft stated they wanted to price their Surface device similarly to other ARM devices at the time. Pre-orders started in early October and released in late October along with the release of Windows 8, which people unanimously put in the bin of bad Windows versions along with Windows ME and Windows XP. The devices were only available to purchase at Microsoft stores in person and online, but later expanded to other retailers. Nowadays, you can pretty much find them at any store that sells computers, so just go ahead and walk into a Best Buy and there will be a table for them probably. There have been many iterations and lines of surfaces, but the canonical line to me are the surfaces that have the removable keyboard, seeing as that was one of the revolutionary and proprietary innovations to the portable computer scene. What I have for you today is the Surface Pro 4. This did not come with a keyboard, but did come with a case and the pen, which is kind of nice. The specs on this guy are nothing to write home about. With the 6th Gen i5 clocked at a whole 2.4 gigahertz, 4 gigabytes of the most dedicated of RAM as it's soldered directly to the motherboard, and 128 gigabytes of storage that is also extremely dedicated. Looking at the sides, we have an SD card slot, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, the proprietary magnetic keyboard connector, the equally proprietary power connector, mini display port, and one USB port. And we've got some camera stuff going on in the front and the back, but I'm just gonna tape over these since we won't be needing them and I don't need Bill Gates watching me desecrate one of his creations. Currently this guy has Windows 10 installed on him, which works fine enough, but to turn this guy into a Steam Deck, we'll have to satisfy condition two of my two imposed conditions and install Linux. Ideally, when I install Linux, I'd like to still be able to use the touchscreen on this guy, but we'll see how that goes. I know there's a special kernel for the surface line that allows you to use the touchscreen, but I'm not sure if I want to go down the typical bring us rabbit hole of a whole lot of work for a small win. But let's see how this guy runs the standard bring us benchmarks. Starting off with Five Nights at Freddy's, everything ran pretty well, 60 FPS throughout. You will notice that there's a weird border around the game window, and that's because if I take off the transformation that I had, you can see that for some reason OBS decided that it was going to not record the video in full screen, so I had to adjust this. So if it looks kind of grainy and bad, uh, that is not a fault of the game itself. Also, I think I played this on Halloween. As you can see, we have, oh, what do they call them in Gravity Falls? The watermelon pumpkin. Otherwise, this ran pretty fine, no complaints. Moving on to the second game in the franchise, for some reason, this got worse frame rate than the first one did. And also, I didn't have the same problem that I did with it being up in the corner. This one just recorded full screen like I intended it to. And I didn't check any of this footage until after the fact, which is why I didn't re-record it at the time. This game ran at about 30 frames per second, as opposed to the 60 we were getting in the first game. It's weird that there are frame drops going on here when this isn't much more than the other game was, other than maybe some more effects and that sort of deal. 
Uh, this one also ran fine. Uh, I didn't play it for too long, but also once you play it for a little bit, there's nothing much more that you can get out of it other than figure out if it crashes when you get jump scared. Both of the first Five Nights at Freddy's games did as well as I would expect that they ran. Next, we have another little weird quirky phenomenon that I didn't figure out until after I looked back at all the footage, you know, much later when I was editing this. Lethal Company did run. However, if you're looking at it right now, you, just, you don't see anything moving. I don't know why that happened. Lethal Company did not run well. I will say that if I remember correctly, I was hitting like tens, twenties maybe. So it was extremely choppy. It was not fun to play at all. And I think I ended up dying to quicksand the first time. You yeah, know, this was not a fun experience experience i would not recommend like it is technically playable but i would not have a fun time playing this and you would expect seeing as the graphics are kind of meant to come off as like older maybe ps2 style that this would run you would have a reasonable suspicion that this would run well but it did not actually moving on to a game that i had reasonable suspicion would run if you notice i am in fact having the same exact issue that i had with lethal company so i wonder if this was an issue with obs or how that was working this did run considerably better than lethal company i think i was hitting 30s and 40s um so it was definitely playable and it was a good time i ended up playing for quite a bit because I just, you know, love playing the first Half-Life. I think I got all the way up to the Resonance Cascade before I realized I'd recorded way too much footage and I needed to move on. The one thing I did forget to do, I think this was the first game I recorded, was split the audio between voiceover and in-game audio, which I, I wanted to have some of the gameplay audio playing in the back of this voiceover section, but I don't think I'll do that because I will have no audio for the Half-Life portion because it all contains me talking. But yeah, overall, ran great. I mean, it should run. This is basically the modern equivalent of Can It Run Doom. Half-Life has just become the new benchmark. All right, now back into a game that actually does have visible footage that you can see. Left 4 Dead ran surprisingly well. I think this ran better or about as good as Half-Life did. And this is built on the Source Engine. So you might actually be able to play Half-Life 2 on this because I did also end up playing this for a considerable amount of time. Um, I played one of the game, I think I played Last Stand or whatever the game mode is that you just have to survive for as long as possible. You can kind of see that there's some choppiness. This wasn't really apparent when I was playing. Again, this might just be an issue of OBS and Left 4 Dead 2 fighting over resources because I, like you can see here, I'm getting up to 46 FPS. I was getting about 40 or 50 50 probably throughout the entire experience. I definitely didn't dip below 30 too much. So this was very much a playable experience. I was having a good time. Uh, I think I ran this out until I actually died. But so this tells me that this might actually be able to play Half-Life 2. But that was not one I tested at the time just because I felt like this was a good enough stand-in. And that way I wasn't completely ripping off John Bringus. And now to our final boss, Mafia 2. Now, like I said, this was meant to be our Grand Theft Auto 5 type game. Uh, you can see we're getting 60 FPS on the title screen, but once I got into a game, messed around with the settings, it was chugging. I was getting maybe 10 frames per second if that. Uh, I tried messing around with the settings a lot and I still wasn't breaking more than maybe like 15 frames per second. You know, everything was just running really slow and choppy and you can kind of see even these cutscenes were not running very well. The cutscenes ran pretty well with some stutters here and there, but as soon as you got into the actual gameplay of it all, like once the game actually started rendering stuff you can see it we dip at like six seven fps changing the settings i did get like i said to around 10 frames per second maybe 15 this was just not working very well so now that we have a baseline on windows 10 let's get this guy some linux we're gonna go try a couple of different distros but i know for a fact ubuntu works so that will be our fail safe so to get us started, I grabbed a USB hub to get more USB ports out of this guy. One USB is not going to cut it, especially if I can't get the touchscreen to work on the OS. In order to install Linux, we're going to have to get into the BIOS options by holding power and volume up. Thankfully, this part is touchscreen friendly, so I don't need a keyboard to maneuver around. You're going to want to turn off secure boot as well as move USB boot to the top of the boot options. After that, you should be good to boot into a live USB or Ventoy if that's what you're using. I've got my USB loaded with Medicat, and I'm going to try Hollow ISO first. 
which was a nightmare and didn't work. I think I got it to load maybe once or twice properly, but after the install script ran, I was treated to black screens upon boot or loading screens that never went anywhere. So we moved on to KUbuntu since Debian and Ubuntu based distros are nice to work with when it comes to older hardware and when I don't want to do a lot of work. I want to say I tried to distro in between Hollow ISO and KUbuntu, but I couldn't tell you what it was at this point. However, KUbuntu would also come to be my downfall. KUbuntu was using way too many system resources when trying to do things like downloading any of the updates or downloading games off of Steam. No joke, I tried downloading Mafia 2 several times only for the progress to fail after a couple of retries and it prompted me to start from the beginning. To top it off, games didn't play well and OBS was not running at all, even after I switched over all the recording tasks to run on the onboard GPU. So we're back to the Bringus classic of pointing the camera at the screen. After this, I was starting to give up, so I switched to our default, our one last saving grace before I give up, Ubuntu. I installed Ubuntu and everything was going so much better. Steam installed no problem, updates were quick, OBS seemed promising, but since I had the camera set up in a nice spot, I just opted to record with the phone still. That and I had KDE Connect going on my main desktop, so that's how I was transferring my footage. All the games downloaded with little to no issue, the stars were aligning, and then it still ran like... <laughs> So I did get one game to run on Kingdom 2. It was just Five Nights at Freddy's and that ran at like nine FPS. Real talk, when Five Nights at Freddy's runs at nine FPS, you know you're screwed. It was at this point that I hung my head and realized why John was the king. Despite his failings in the past, he was not one to give up, except those couple of times he gave up. Okay, really it was only that one time with the decapitated laptop, but still. But not all was lost. We still had the easy way out, streaming from my main PC. Honestly, this ran a lot better than I thought. Yes, I know the two machines in question are directly next to each other, but it's still impressive how smooth it runs. My personal Chromebox from my second video ever was set up with Steam Link on it to act as a pseudo Steam machine in my bedroom, but that was prone to severe input lag and poor frame rates despite it being across the hall from my office space. But this guy is definitely showing some promise. Granted, this is only Half-Life 1, but since my PC is the workhorse in this situation, it can play nearly any game on my library with no effort on the side of the surface other than handing off inputs and receiving video. And I can use it like a Steam Deck with Steam's big picture mode and just have it default to streaming from the PC. But is this really the true Steam Deck experience? No. And the touchscreen doesn't even work. I sat down to write my admission of defeat when I started to remember what I had said earlier. I know there's a special kernel for the surface line that allows you to use the touchscreen, but I'm not sure if I want to go down the typical bring us rabbit hole of a whole lot of work for a small win. So I did some searching and found out that it was really easy to install that custom kernel, like copy and paste commands easy. I followed the steps for Ubuntu, booted back into the BIOS, turned on secure boot because that works now, and loaded back into Ubuntu and voila, now we have touchscreen capabilities. See you later, Logitech MX Anywhere 2. We now have multi-touch support, pen support, and camera support. Okay, well, in theory, we have camera support according to the instructions. But with that out of the way, let's see if performance got any better. And drum roll, please. It did not. At least, nothing meaningful to start. I'm getting a couple more FPS from Five Nights at Freddy's, but I still wouldn't call it playable. Okay, let's try Half-Life. Holy shit, this runs amazing. I'm getting 60 FPS and I didn't have to crank those settings down. Oh, that is really nice. Well, how about Lethal Company? And it won't even boot. Not even in land mode. It just does this thing where it lets me choose and just crashes. Okay, uh, how about Mafia 2? Well, I get to the title screen, but same issue. However, I feel like this is more of a I ran out of resources issue than it is a maybe I can't connect to the internet sort of deal. I don't know. Now this feels like a true Steam Deck experience. Set up a couple of Joy-Con on the side and basically got the predecessor to what we know and love today. Now for the final verdict. Would I recommend this setup? Probably not. Unless you've got a spare Surface Pro 4 laying around, or you can get one for insanely cheap, I probably wouldn't pick one up if you're looking to game. Although, with the added touchscreen support, this could be a really cheap alternative to one of those nice drawing tablets, so let me know if this is something that you want me to explore in the future. 
I'm not much of an artist myself, but I could definitely show it off and show how you would use it in conjunction with the, like your main PC. I did get around to testing some of the drawing applications. Uh, the two biggest ones on Linux are Krita and GIMP. And those were really nice using the pen that came with my tablet. So I can definitely see this as being a cheap alternative to one of those really expensive drawing tablets. But for gaming, I'd say this is probably a no-go. But streaming from your main PC definitely seems viable. Think of it like a second display, which is also something that I want to explore because I'm rocking with a single monitor right now and I'm missing the dual screen action that I used to have. But to circle back to the whole reason this video exists, I got a thing to run Linux and man is this thing portable, making my record one out of one or 100%. Checkmate John, I am the king now. Victory. <laughs>Hey, real quick, I'm recording this part at the end, but we did hit 100 subscribers maybe a couple months ago. Uh, and I just wanted to say thank you all for subscribing and joining me for this ride. Like I said, I'm still figuring out kind of what I want to do here, but I've got a plan in place for 2025. I've got not a definitive content calendar, but I've got sort of a temporary content calendar sorted out. So in 2025, I plan on taking this thing into full force or at least as full force as I I can take it while also working a full-time job but do expect to see more from me more consistent uploads from me and also more streams from me in the future uh, i'm gonna be streaming on saturdays almost exclusively unless something changes but i highly doubt it will but yeah thank you guys so much and check out my socials uh, there is a link tree link in my bio on youtube I will also include it in the description below. I'm mainly on Blue Sky now. That is probably where you'll find me the most active. And also we have Discord. If you want to get somewhat frequent updates, I plan on keeping you all up to date more on that now that I've got a definitive goal to work towards in the year 2025. But again, thank you guys so much. And I hope you enjoy the rest of this video or the end of this video if this ends up being at the end.